Good morning. Happy New Year. January 1st. Ah, it's 9.48. I just woke up like 10 minutes ago. Dad went to go get us some kolaches from the donut shop down the road. Because off to a great start. Eat something terribly unhealthy and spend money you don't need to when there's a house full of food. <laughs> so, update. Um, the only thing I have left to do for, like, clothing clothing is go through all the jackets and cover-ups, decide what I'm going to keep and what I'm not. And, come on, we know I'm just going to keep it all. And I still need to run through shoes, which I think, actually, all the shoes I have worn at some point in this year, with exception of, um, those with the cute little buckles. And that's because the heel is so thin and my ankles are so weird that... I feel like I'm gonna like wobble and like fall down but other than that I think everyone else I've worn at least once so I think I might skip over shoes and not do them and then just try and make sure I wear one of the big fancy pretty dresses with those shoes but then I have to figure out what I'm gonna do to wear a pretty dress and nice shoes I took one of the cubbies to put in the closet of course so this is a little less that looks a little less cluttered we still have way too much stuff I ended up moving stuff around and I've got like a little coffee tea setup thing over here for Christmas ugh, I got this cute little thing from my brother and my sister-in-law it is so cute I love it you can't see it and I'm not smart enough to put on the flash okay smart enough to turn on the kitchen light so we have a little bit of lighting so, it came with a bunch of these, like, fancy herbal teas that I'm excited to try. I'm going to wait until the next Sunday family dinner so that my sister-in-law can try them with me. Here is the mug, and I just, I love it. I have been really into a lot of blues and greens here lately. In case you can't tell, there's a lot of blues and greens happening <laughs> that I tend to choose. And then, also got these earbuds. They're the cute little kitty. Look at that. How cute is that? Dude, can I do this with one hand? It's a little kitty cat. I'm so excited. They're so cute. So the table is cleared off and I ended up, I found these placemats. And so I've just been putting those all around the kitchen to kind of tie in stuff. And then I found this giant glass platter that for some reason my brain said, yeah, put that under the spinny wheel and on top of the placemat because that's the thing. Rearranging over here, I still haven't put up all the baking stuff on the top shelf. That needs to be wiped up and cleaned. So does the stove because I made a mess yesterday. I moved the Ninja, the toaster, and the regular coffee pot over here along with my dad's thermos and then paper towels and another one of those little placemats. Now, this disaster, all the dirty dishes from yesterday because we did black eyed peas, two things of cabbage, we had regular lasagna, we had three different flavors of wings. We had a veggie lasagna, a different type of veggie lasagna, more wings, so many plates and cups and dishes, and pots and pans that we use to make stuff, random miscellaneous candy, fudge, tons of popcorn. This is broken, can you, can you tell? <laughs> I did at least, well, I did not. Dad at least finished loading the dishwasher for me yesterday, so that got done. All right, update on laundry room. So we threw a bunch of stuff to get it out of the kitchen for yesterday. So the air fryer still needs to be cleaned. This shelf is a little bit of a disaster still. I'm gonna straighten it up. We've got more stuff up there that we only use every once in a while. Stuff down here, I pulled out uh, the air fryer that needs to go back. Or what was that? No, the three crock pot thing was there. The air fryer needs to go here where that little bin is. And then over here, I've got just all the water on the ground, plus the containers I still need to go through and decide keep or no keep, and then design it a home, designate it a home. And then this drawer I still got to organize. I think I'm going to put in all my spray paints, uh, extension cords, and then... This top one is just all the gloves and the safety glasses. Sadly, it is day 10 of 10. I have to go back to my normal life of work and whatnot tomorrow. So today is the last day to get whatever I need done, done without any interruptions. So we're going to finish going through the jackets. I'm going to look at the whiteboard again for the first time in a few days. Going to get the new earbuds 
charge so that I can figure out if I like it. Going to do so much editing today. So much. Not a lot. But I'm going to bounce back and forth like I was doing that one day that I was super productive. Where it's half an hour of editing, half an hour of working on, you know, this disaster. <laughs> so, uh, what time is it? It's almost 10, so I'm going to stop and I'm going to edit for half an hour. Then I will work on a load of dishes because there's so many dishes to be done. And then I'll come try on the jackets and stuff. Update. So, it's almost 1 o'clock. I did get the dishwasher unloaded, reload it, and I've got other dishes soaking for the next round. Dad went and got us kolaches, ate half of it. Well, he got me two different ones. He got a spicy boudin and then a jalapeno cheddar. I went half this morning for breakfast, eating the other half of them with some mustard and chips for lunch. I did do some editing, and then I haven't done anything in the room yet. I've been watching stuff on Netflix, uh, Chelsea Handler's stand-up. Right now I'm on Sebastian Maniscalco, and then I've been watching the Wednesday Addams series. Oh my goodness, I'm like literally tearing up right now. Ancient wisdom dating back thousands of years gave us the truth about gratitude. Every single religion speaks of giving thanks. All the sages and saviors of the world demonstrated the use of gratitude in all their teachings. The greatest human beings who have ever lived showed us the way with gratitude, and by their example became shining lights in our history. Surely this is why Einstein said thank you hundreds of times every single day. Gratitude. What am I thankful for? <laughs> um, let's see. I am thankful for this messy house because it means I have a roof over my head. I'm thankful for all these clothes. I'm thankful for the job that I sometimes complain about because it has given me the money and the resources to waste it on all this junk over the years. I'm thankful for the friends and family I do have that even though sometimes I won't let them help me, are there to help me. And I'm thankful for the opportunity to try and get my life on track and to create the kind of life I want. That, <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> okay, but that is what I'm grateful for. For the time and the opportunity to do better now. Okay, one of the books I'm going to work through is The Year of Living Happy, Finding Contentment and Connection in a Crazy World. So, We'll see what insights I get from this, and I'll let you know. I'll read. I don't know how this book is formatted. One thing, let's see. About goals. Yeah, we'll probably do a page or two a day and work our way through it. It's like 200 pages, so, I mean, won't take a year to do. <laughs> Knowing me, it probably will. Okay. Okay, so today's thing is Happy Roots. It talks about how regardless of life circumstances, good or bad, that happiness is rooted and that having deep roots of happiness allow you to weather the hard times. But I kind of like that idea of not being so stuck in the current now that I don't see that, hey, I'm smart enough to figure this out. I have a group of people around me who can help me should I need it. And to not get so obsessed with what's going wrong and understand that I've been through similar things before and made it through. I've probably been through worse things before and made it through. And there doesn't have to be a perfect or right solution. But the whole not freaking out and overreacting, if I can just cut that out and be, instead of like so resistant and rejecting what's happening, just like accept, okay, so this is what's happening. What do I do from here? And trusting that I've always figured it out. I will figure it out. And if not, game over, whatever. <laughs> okay, so I've got this daily devotion and like that was kind of like religious based. I don't 
go to church on the regular. I was raised going to church. I did the whole Sunday school thing. And then in high school, um, it was the private school I went to. It was mandatory to go to at least two out of the three services every week. So it's one of those things that I'm sort of have it weaved through my way of thinking and stuff. But I'm not 24-7 sort of thing. I'm like a weird gray zone where I'm not like all in, but I'm not all out. And like, I don't fully accept everything. I don't reject it all as just nonsense sort of deal. I don't know. I guess like if you've ever done the thing where it's like, you know, whatever your understanding of whatever this higher power may or may not be sort of deal. I definitely don't know for sure. But I do keep it a part of my journey of figuring it out. Alright, 365. So one of these a day. That'll work. So starting off, very pretty flowers. Love this. How to use the book. Okay, let's figure out how to use it. So this essential volume presents a year's worth of advice for improving your well-being, touching the factors that most influence and enrich human health and happiness. With each day comes a new activity, a new way of thinking, or a new source of inspiration. As you journey through your year of well-being, you will see how simple changes when added up can have a significant impact on your relationships, intelligence, environment, and physical and mental health. Based on the latest scientific studies and academic research, these tips are designed to be practical and simple to incorporate in your life. So take responsibility for your health and happiness and find the person you're meant to be. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, can you tell a deflect with humor? But yeah, so being forgiving of yourself if you have an unhealthy day. The key is being committed and enthusiastic about making changes to better your health and quality of life. Alrighty. There's a lot of stuff. Spring. When I'm in spring, we're in... Oh, see, look, this. my brain's gonna worry because now do I, do I start at one or do I need to start wherever winter is? Because we're in winter. Oh, goodness. Uh-oh. Brain malfunction. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Do I go in order starting from one? Do I find wherever winter should be towards the back, right? Hang on, we're going to figure this out. Okay, so option one is start in the winter section. Even though it might throw me off slightly because it is numbered. Two is just start at the beginning, which is spring, even though technically it's not spring. Or three, start at spring, but don't do it until spring actually gets here. Oh my goodness. See, I'm overthinking this stuff, and I don't know what to do. The only thing that would make me say don't start in spring is the fact that it was like, it's got delicious and healthy recipes that use seasonal fruits and vegetables. So that you would very much need to be in the season. I don't know. But I'm not too worried about it because the chances of me actually going through the, and using the recipes are very little. Okay, yep, yeah, nope. Decision made. We're just going to start spring because it's time for new beginnings and that's what we're doing on January the 1st. So the perfect season to start taking positive steps to improve your well-being Now's the time to get your mind and body back into shape after enduring months of darkness and heavy winter carbs. Which, I mean, hey, months of darkness, yes. Years of darkness, yes. Possibly decades, correct. Heavy winter carbs, 24-7, and it doesn't even have to be winter. So, day one, get in touch with nature. Oh, goodness, okay. Okay, so yeah, we can do this. Okay. So for today, we're just going to walk outside and take a couple deep breaths and look at the grass that's slightly dead and very sparse, sparse, very sparse. <laughs> and then we will try and start to plan to go to parks and nature reserves and enjoy some beauty. So hey, we'll get some good b-roll out of it probably. All right, let's go get some nature. Dogs are enjoying nature. I just see all the things that need to get done that I haven't done.
Focus on the positive. Yeah, that definitely is going to take some practice for me to get used to. There's some green, a little bit of a tree or something popping up. And the dead tree that's creating sinkholes because the roots are finally giving out. The washing machine that really needs to get hauled off, but I don't know how to do that. Um, the boys seem preoccupied with other things or not worried about it. I don't know. The random elliptical machine that the kids love playing on, so I just leave it out here. The table that's been up since October and it is January now. <sighs> the fencing that needs to be put up. The car. It works, but my brother's going to take it to his shop.